My name is Dr. Kevin Pekka. I want to make a podcast that exposes people to the true miracles of life and health. All the guests on this show have been specially picked because they bring something positive to the world. They have some of the most amazing and inspiring life stories. These people have a passion for living, healing, and leaving the world better than they found it. There is something inside these people that made them keep fighting through all the tough times, even when people told them it was not possible. They carried on and made their lives beautiful again. And now they are sharing their experiences with the world. This is the Expect Miracles podcast. Enjoy the show. Dr. Luis Jovell is a chiropractor out of Tuscany, California. Dr. Jovell's journey has not been an easy one, and he has been relentless in the pursuit of his dreams. He was born in El Salvador, raised in the Compton, Paramount, California area, and has done everything in his power to succeed and make a beautiful life. He has a huge heart and it always comes out in the community he serves. Dr. Jovell is an inspiration to me, and it is an honor to have him on the podcast to share his story. Please welcome Dr. Luis Jovell. Dr. Luis, where do you practice out of? I practice in the city of Tustin currently in Orange County. Just moved to a new office, right? Just recently moved into a new office this weekend, two days ago. How's that going? Oh, it's amazing. Now that the move is done, at least. Yeah. So what did you, uh, you outgrew your first space and business as well? Yeah, we started off small, just like we should start in business. Yeah, at least. absolutely. And grew into our previous location that only had, it was only three rooms yeah. and a waiting room and reception area. But as we got busier, we figured, hey, maybe it's time to uh, make that move, reinvest into our business and be able to service others. Uh, Absolutely. With a so, Dr. Jovell, you've always, I met you at the library in chiropractic school when you were working. You always went like really out of your way to help me out. You really didn't know me at all. I'm very like grateful for that. You helped me out a lot in school, even when you, even when you didn't have to. Where does that come from? Has that always just been a part of you or did you pick that up somewhere? That's a funny question. I think that it's something in my personality, I believe. I mean, I growing up, I never had anything easy. Yeah. And people along the way just gave me a hand and it inspired me to to want to be the same way and impact those who at some point may need me, whether it be some form of inspiration or some form of, of way that I can help with my resources. So it's something that I, I just naturally like to do. Awesome. And where are you from originally? Originally born in Central America, El Salvador. Okay. Grew up in the city of Paramount, Compton. Moved up to the city of Victorville thereafter for high school. Uh huh. Down for undergrad, at Cal State Fullerton, and have been in the Orange County area ever since. Beautiful. And how did you get into chiropractic? Chiropractic school was something that was introduced to me through sports. I played soccer all my life. Okay. My dream was professional at one point. And my physicals used to be done by a chiropractor. She sat me down once. She said, hey, check this out. This is what I do. Cleared some of her patients to be able to explain it to me. This is what chiropractic does. And it's a pretty cool field. So it it really got the ball rolling as far as thinking about my future at that point. I believe I was either a sophomore or a junior in high school. And then I did my due diligence and did my research after that. And it's something that I became very passionate about. I read books on it. What was it that that doc said to you that made you want to research chiropractic and possibly get into the field? Did she give you an uh, adjustment that day too? She did not give me an adjustment, actually. She just did her, the physical evaluation. But more than anything, it was the way that everything carried within her office and how she approached patients and what chiropractic essentially was. Because at that point, I didn't really know what, what chiropractic was. Mm-hmm. So the fact that she was able to expose me to that spark, that little thought to be able to say, hey, maybe I should look into this was very special for me in that regard, because it is what it is. It's what I do now. And is that in high school where you met her? This was in high school. Yeah, this was during a evaluation for a sports team. Did you think you might at that point want to pursue chiropractic as a career or you were just thinking about it just as a patient or? I thought about it from a career choice. Mm hmm. But went off and uh, did my own research, read books, and really try to inform myself on, okay, what is this thing? What is this chiropractic stuff? I know that you have that perception that chiropractic is for backs, bad backs. Right. Because we adjust the spine. But I knew that there was something a little bit more to that. And 
just went off on my own, man, and did my own thing and uh, really try to gather up some facts on whether like, hey, is this going to be a career choice for me? And uh, yeah, go ahead. What did you decide to pursue in undergrad? Undergrad was kinesiology. Okay. So you had the science background and everything. That's right. So at that point, I made the decision fairly quick. Okay, this is chiropractic. I've always tried to make one decision and, and, and really stick to it mm-hmm. to gain some type of stability Yeah, with anything mm-hmm. and accomplish goals. So I got in touch with a counselor at high school. And then I, as a junior, reached out to SCUHS, Southern mm-hmm. California University of Health Sciences, and spoke to a particular counselor there as a junior in high school and said, hey, let me know what is it that I need to do to get there as soon as possible. And me being the impatient person that I've always been, (laughs) like direct me in the way so I can just get this done quickly because I don't think I can wait for eight years or nine years. Right, right. Yeah. And then I acted accordingly. She said, hey, if you're going to be in Cal State Fullerton, go for kinesiology or go, go for some other health science major and take the following classes. And so I did. It wasn't fast enough for my liking. So I attended weekend classes at SCUHS, which is a chiropractic college that we graduated from, you and I kept. And I was going at some point to school seven days a week. Wow. <laughs> get to chiropractic school yeah. as soon as possible and finish. Absolutely. Was there anybody along the way that told you that you couldn't do it, that it was too much work? Because I had a couple of people try to talk me out of it, either because they didn't know the background of the profession or they told me it was going to be way too hard and that I couldn't do it. Did you experience that as well? Yeah, I mean, I did actually. And it's a little bit more difficult when it's what you think part of your support system. Mm-hmm. How was your support system in high school and back then and everything? From a financial perspective, I think that as a family, we've always taken care of each other. Yeah. However, from school, mentally is half the battle, right? Yeah, right. Being able to overcome yourself mentally and being able to act accordingly to be successful is really tough to understand that concept and actually get through it. So sometimes I did get people tell me, hey, like maybe this is too much. Maybe you can't do it. Maybe you should slow down. (laughs) I think realistically, when I think that the way to go is empowering somebody to be like, hey, man, it's, it's okay to move forward. And it's okay to maybe take on too much yeah. because it's only going to make you stronger, you know? Absolutely. You're an undergraduate, graduated from Cal State Fullerton with a kinesio degree. And then... Funny enough, I did not graduate with a kinesiology degree. So I researched and I came to realize that graduate schools don't require a degree. Right. You're very right. Yeah. To go to chiropractic school, to go to medical school, to get your JD, be a lawyer, you do not need to have a degree. Mm -hmm. So I made the decision. I said, okay, Cal State Fullerton is getting a little bit pricey Yeah, because I'm living on campus. I'm paying for all these books. I have to live and eat something at some point (laughs) and I need to still get an education. So I said, okay, the kinesiology degree, am I going, am I, will I be able to get into chiropractic school, which is what I ultimately want and be a doctor and still be able to be a doctor without any kinesiology degree? Or will a kinesiology make me that much of a better doctor? Mm -hmm. Or what's the connection between me and the chiropractor and being a doctor? And where does the kinesiology degree fall there? And I just made the decision that, hey, I can save a couple of ten thousands of dollars. At least, yeah. A couple of years worth of time that you cannot buy back. Yeah. And try my best, get straight A's in sciences so I have no issue as far as admissions in chiropractic school and move forward. So I decided to not go with the Kines degree. I got done with all my prerequisites in Cal State Fullerton in a matter of three years. Mm -hmm. I got accepted into graduate school, which was SCUHS for chiropractic school to to be a doctor, and went from there. My way of preparing for graduate school too, just because, I mean, you know that we went from 20 units to 32 units. Oh, it was insane. It was just absolutely outrageous. Yeah. My way of preparing for that yeah. Overloading in classes. So absolutely the full load in, in undergrad and being able to take these other weekend courses as well to get ahead. So going to school seven days a week and overloading myself to be able to prepare mm-hmm. for yeah. something else. Yeah. After chiropractic school, there's really not much that's going to phase you because it is just high pressure, high intensity, overworked for about two years. And 
you reach a certain point where it's unmanageable, but you still do it. And your body's like, you know what? I'm going to do my very best here. Whenever happens, happens. I've done my best now. Hopefully that translates. Yeah. It's crazy. Definitely. So Dr. Jovell, you have a little bit of a specialty within the chiropractic field. You like to work with athletes. What would you say you do? Is it a myofascial release? I know you have some tools. What would you say you do a uh, type of chiropractic? So what we do in the office more than anything, it's more of a sports therapy and rehab work, sports injuries. So I get a diverse amount of patients from weightlifters, powerlifters, soccer players, to professional boxers sometimes, basketball players that all deal with these ongoing nagging injuries such as knee pain, shoulder pain, and so on and so forth. So what we do for the most part is do rehab for that, do physiotherapeutic modalities that will help with swelling, that will help with stiffness, scar tissue buildup, and lack of mobility, as well as lack of strength because of all these things. So we essentially eliminate this ongoing problem that they've been going through and rehab them into more strengthening being to be able to work out more effectively, to be able to push more weight and to, to essentially be able to train. I mean, some of these guys, it's yeah. their job to lift. It's their job to box mm -hmm. and to play soccer or basketball. So it's essentially a sports injury concept of what we have attacking these sports injuries in the office. And I'm passionate, I'm exceptionally passionate about it because half of these injuries I've had myself. Yeah. So it's easy for me to relate and say, hey, like I, I understand. I'll show right. you compass of that. Not because, not necessarily because I want to be your doctor, but because, mm -hmm. because I've gone through what you're going through and I can completely relate. So when I tell you, take my hand, we'll make it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I wish I knew when I was playing, especially high school sports, I used to tear my hip, my right hip flexor once a season. And if I knew about sports rehabilitation, sports chiropractic, I wish somebody told me because that's a preventable injury. And I was just like, absolutely not. Am I going to tear my hip flexor this year? When's it going to go? And sure enough, boom, yeah. once a year it was done. And I was lucky enough my senior year to run into a sports chiropractor that fixed me up. But I wish I had somebody like that my entire career. So did I. I fractured my ankle three times, unfortunately. And that's what, what was part of what ended my soccer career. Mm -hmm. If I would have known somebody who does exactly what I do now, I think I would be in a little bit of a better shape as far as my ankle's concerned. But, but yeah, you're right. I wish I would have known someone too. Jovel, you were, from what I remember, I be in and out of touch with you uh, over the past couple of years. Did you start your own practice right away or did you work for somebody first and then get into it i have a crazy story our last year in chiropractic school it, it's meant to go out there and intern and find offices to be in that you can work essentially work for free so you can get hired and stuff that's we i understood quickly that that was a little grace period that we had oh yeah for us from a career base to be able to have our expenses paid for through school mm -hmm. right the school loans and be able to learn the craft and find something that you can essentially call home after graduation. I interned for an office for about a year. It unfortunately did not work out to my favor or yep. fortunately now, of course. Fortunately but, <laughs> now, yeah, that, exactly. I was just about to say that. <laughs> at that point, it didn't work to my favor. So I was a little bit disappointed in that. And now here I was, freshly graduated. I had graduated December 2014. And it was January. Here I was still trying to look for a job when I had put all my all my bets in one. Yeah, all the eggs in one basket. All the eggs in one basket. And it didn't work out for me. So here I was trying to look for a job. And I spoke to one of my colleagues. And he said, hey, check this out. There's this other job. You should go check it out in the city of Hawthorne. I went to the interview and the lady was absolutely amazed at how well we had been taught essentially mm -hmm. so she enjoyed the the way that i adjusted the spine and everything and she was very happy so i got hired on the spot and was told to wait for my license to come in because it takes about two to three months for your license to come in and for you to be officially mm -hmm. uh be able to be a practicing doc in the in the city in the state of california so i had to wait actually before that i probably had called about a hundred offices to look for a job wow sign no sign of nothing i went to a few uh i think i went to 
well, 10 interviews, mm-hmm. probably to pay me less than minimum wage. Wow, really? Really. And that, I was extremely disappointed. So that's when I actually uh, spoke to my colleague and my colleague was like, hey, let me handle this. I think I've got some for you. So that's when I met that lady. Mm-hmm. It was a doc in the city of Hawthorne. I got the job and she said, okay, wait a couple of months for you to get your license and you're hired. So I put all my bags and uh, all my eggs in one in one ga- uh, basket there too. And my license came in. The first thing that I do is give her a call, say, hey, I'm ready to start tomorrow if you need me to. I'm just, I, I just want to work. She didn't answer. She called me back the next day and said, hey, Dr. Jovell, I'm sorry, but the guy that you were supposed to replace decided to stay. And it's just more oh, man. for me to keep him. So here I was for two months essentially wasting time thinking that I had a job. Mm-hmm. So now I'm back to the drawing board. I'm like, okay, I'm going to call another hundred offices. <laughs> and that didn't work out, Kevin. Yeah. Enough. So here we are. I think it was March or April. I call this office. I think I got this classified like this posting from a chiropractic school out in the East. And it said, looking to take over practice in the city of Huntington Beach, California, with a good patient base and so on and so forth. Honestly, at this point, it's not something that I really wanted to do or was interested in, but I called anyway because I had absolutely no choice. Yeah. So I called this guy. He said, I bought that practice six years ago. He was like, that ad is extremely old. What? And (laughs) it's still, I don't know, but you come and uh, talk to me either way. Wow. And I told him. I'll be honest with you. I have no time to waste. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. What are we going to talk about? Yeah. Is he said, maybe you can start here. And so I was like, okay, it's worth a shot. So I went and spoke to him. He, the first thing he told me, he was like, doc, he was like, I'm not willing to pay you a dime because I'm not in that position to. However, you can start here in my office and pay me a percentage as an independent contractor. And I said, okay, what's the percentage? And he said, 50%. I was like, okay, that's a bit high. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's be real here. So I was like, just because you have to still pay 20 something percent on your taxes, right? On that 50%. So you're left with essentially nothing. And he said, I understand, but I will teach you every single thing that you need to learn. I then realized I'll pay my dues mm-hmm. 50%. So I believe it was April 2015. And I was a couple months in, I think it was about June. And I came to realize, unfortunately, I was being taken advantage of again, and I wasn't being taught anything, and I was essentially using thousands that I did not have Yeah, for marketing things that didn't really work for me at yeah. that point, dipping into my savings, and I think I have possibly, I was there up until August, and I think I had probably made about 800 bucks <sighs> from April to August, $800 in those <laughs> months. Not once a month, all right? That's that, yeah, whole, yeah. that whole thing. And so I went up to the guy, to the owner of the practice, and said, hey, check this out. I'm not making it, man. Yeah. I need some help, whether it be guidance or whatever. I was hoping we'd renegotiate this situation. Yeah, definitely. This whole thing. No contract had been signed, so I figured it was casual enough to ask respectable manner. And I still remember the look on the guy's face. He looked at me and said, are you serious? What? You're so ungrateful. And he's like, you don't understand that you're in a gold mine. And yeah, well, let me see some of it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, there's no gold. Yeah. And I was just in shock to just be listening to that. So I walked out and he said, he cursed and he's like, are you going to effing stay or are you going to leave? And I was like, dude, there is nothing for me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm out. Yeah. So here we are, August 2015, and I'm back to the drawing board. And I'm like, what the hell am I going to do Yeah. with this? And so I figured that the only way that I can pull this off, and I understand that the chiropractic profession, unfortunately, the, a, a phenomenal profession, had not in, evolved into, into the health, healthcare industry as much as like we'd hope mm-hmm. as far as opportunity and uh, to be of a service to more patients. Because what we do is amazing. Absolutely. It does help a lot of people. But unfortunately, I had come to realize how much separated that kind of profession has been, not only within the healthcare field, but amongst ourselves. Yeah, definitely. And I came to realize that the only way was to 
go out there and create the opportunity that nobody wanted to give me. Mm -hmm. So luckily enough, while I was in, in graduate school, all these financial aid checks that they had given me, I decided not to spend the whole money and stash some as we Smart. go yeah. per trimester. I was stashing in my savings over and over and over, which was meant not to be touched. Yeah. It was meant to be used for an emergency situation such as this one specifically. Yeah, yeah. Definitely get into emergency time. Yeah. Exactly. So here I was and I was like, okay, I just got out of chiropractic school not too long ago. I have absolutely no experience in business. Mm -hmm. And what am I going to do? So I was like, I'm going to take the leap because I feel like I have no choice. So I got some of this money and to be just very straightforward with you, it was $22,000 that I had saved up throughout student loans and working on yeah. a regular too. So I got 11 and I give the rest to my dad. I said, Hey, take this because if it's in my bank account, I'm, I will, stashing it, yeah. I, I'm touching it. <laughs> yeah. <know>? yeah. <laughs> so I got these $11,000 and I said, okay, I need a plan. I got a broker and I told him exactly everything that I needed. I told him exactly everything that I wanted to, to spend in the classifies. There was this chiropractor who was giving away a high low table, which is a mechanical table that goes up and down. It costs thousands. Yes. Very expensive. As well as another drop table. I think that overall it was like about $12,000 worth, man, to be honest with you, that he was giving away and it's specifically there to a student for somebody who's starting their own practice. So I wrote him an email. I told him my story. I told him if he'd be nice enough to uh, consider me, I'd drive all the way to Fresno to get it. Wow. Yeah. And sure enough, he gave me a call back. He said, hey, it's yours. Anything I can do to help. Wow. I was like, yes. Wow. Doors opening. The doors are opening. Yeah. So it's the moment that you start knocking. So here I was. My broker came to me with 30 locations. I went and did my due diligence on all of them. I looked at all of them and I made my final decision on the last one. We started negotiating. We got a couple months free rent and we had the tables and I started shopping for things that we needed in the office that weren't too expensive too, because you don't want to dip too much right. into these savings. And all these, th all these guys that I started meeting at the gym, I started telling, hey man, I got a spot, come check it out. So they came in and checked it out. I, in I started understanding business slowly mm -hmm. as I progressed and Honestly, I haven't stopped working since that day. I threw everything on the wall and saw what and, and saw what, what was sticked on the wall. And I started really capitalizing on that, started paying attention to business patterns, started paying attention to revenues and where they were coming from. Because before I can be a doctor, I have to be a businessman. Mm -hmm. Because if I can't bring in that patient, there's no way that the doctor in me can help. You can't do your services if, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Exactly. So I probably read about 50 plus business books within the year to try to educate myself on a whole different world. Mm -hmm. We know chiropractic. You put a spine in front of me, I don't know exactly what to do with right. it. Right, right. But me and I, at that point, I have absolutely no idea how to bring that patient into, into mm -hmm. the room. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I mean, they gave us like, our school gave us, they tried to give us some business background, but you have absolutely no idea until it happens to you. You can read a lot of books. And I think that's why you were successful is because you were reading the books and doing it at the same time. That's exactly. It's one thing to read the book and be like, okay, I'll implement this down the road. But you had to. It was a go, go, go. It was retain and apply, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Kevin, it's, it's actually funny that you bring that up. Business classes in chiropractic school, they didn't even scrape the surface. No, 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 no. I was just thinking about that a few days ago. Like, hey, like, by the grace of God, I am where I am, and I'm thankful, and I'm thinking about my education along the way. I mean, they taught me how to be a great doc, man, mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I'm very, very confident in my abilities to see a patient, tell them exactly what they have without hesitation mm -hmm. and without being intimidated by any other doc. But when it comes to business, we didn't even scrape the surface, and it's yeah. funny yeah. how much there is to it. And even then, yeah. you know, there is so much to learn. Absolutely. They almost encourage you to do what you exactly did. Go to some doctors, see if you can get a job. Like they don't really encourage going out on your own and doing your own thing, understandably, because it is a lot of hard work. But I mean, sometimes it is right for people and it is the right move. And they tell you, you can't do it. And you know what? Some people listen and some people don't. And you push through. There's definitely a couple brick walls you got to break through. And it's tough. 
Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Dr. Jovell, what would be some advice that you've taken along your way, your journey for future doctors of chiropractic, future small business owners, anyone trying to succeed in their passion and trying to make a business out of it because they love what they do? What would be your advice for them? Kevin, as, as simple as this may sound, if there's something that I've really, really understood throughout these years that I've essentially bounced on, I've come to realize that there that the key to success, whether it be in chiropractic, whether it be in the way that you approach patients or or pursuing your passion, it starts in the mind. Success starts in the mind because we're essentially the ones who dictate the boundaries. We're the ones who dictate what we can and cannot do. And being able to get your mind right and telling yourself, hey, you can do this. And be able to set up a plan accordingly and just be relentless there after that. It's just inevitable to Key, reach your Keyword goal. relentless. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be, yeah. <laughs> have to have, you have to be relentless. You have to be, you look at all the greats, man. I admire all the greats, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, all these guys have been absolute borderline crazy. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. You just don't get to greatness You not being relentless. Mm. So if there's something that I've really understood, that success starts within the mind. Being able to dictate, hey, this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to act accordingly, and I am not going to stop until I get there. And it doesn't matter what you do. When you put in that much work, when you put in that many hours, it's impossible to not be successful. Absolutely. So, what do you think that driving force was with you? Because there were probably were so many times along your road where you could have been like, I'm not doing this. I can't do this. I'm giving up. What was that driving force inside of you? It's funny you ask, Kevin, because I just came to that realization of what that was about a month ago, a few years in. I knew that my family had always inspired me to be able to do things and everything. But I came to, to really think about it about a month ago. And what gives people the impulse is essentially other people, right? I mean, you can only be so selfish. And <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Things for yourself before it becomes so important that you're doing it for this person, this person, that person. So for me, who always inspired me to do to want to be better was my parents because we come from an immigrant family. I was born mm -hmm. in Central America. Mm -hmm. And just seeing all those sacrifices to come to here and be able to work as an immigrant family and be able to provide and essentially be good, you know, resident. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. So I figured it was my time to pay back. It was my time to say, hey, these are your efforts. It's been exceptionally rough for, for our family. And we've essentially had to work up to where we are. So what inspires me is that whole process. I don't want this whole process to go to waste mm -hmm. for me to say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to be successful. I'm not going to take that next step. I'm not going to be a doctor. I, I saw that as, as a mm -hmm. cowardly state of mind. So I said, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to act accordingly and I'm going to be successful, not for me, but for yeah. my family to be able to provide. It was bigger than you. Your mission was bigger than you. It was much bigger than me. And I realize now what that means. Whereas when you're a little bit younger, you can't help but to think about yourself. Yeah. I mean, you're growing and you're yeah. evolving into who you are to be. But that is my driving force. It has always been. And I think that that's why the fires never, never really, uh, yeah. down, man. Absolutely. It's something that inspires the heck out of me yeah. to go even further more. Yeah. From what I'm taking from that is know your why. Know what it is why you do something because there are going to be plenty of days, even though it's the most passionate thing you're about, there's going to be days where you don't feel like doing it. You don't feel like getting up and it's tough. When you know what your why is, that's what's going to get you up out of bed in the morning. And some people don't have that and that's why some people stop, I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. So you have to find that driving force on what it is. And oftentimes it's not something for yourself. Mm. You guys, you, but you have to figure it out and have a strong why and act accordingly. Yeah. Perfect. So that's my personal why. We always have our why for our office to be able to empower our patients to be better, which is something that I'm very passionate about in the office. But yeah, mentally, physically, spiritually, absolutely. everything. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I mean, you just think about like there's so much negative energy out there sometimes and so much of uh, approach with scarcity where we want to promote abundant health and strength in, in financial stability. That's essentially what I envision, you know, doing for all my patients. If you're walking out unempowered, then I've done something wrong. Yeah. So Dr. Jovell, where are you located? Where can people find you on the internet, social media platforms? We're very active on social media, Instagram. You can find us at Spinal Performance, the one word, uh, Spinal Performance. You can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com, I think forward slash Dr. Joe Bell, spell out Dr. D-O-C-T-O-R, Dr. Joe Bell, V as in Victor, spinalperformance.com. We're in the city of Tustin currently in Orange County, California. Our address is 14591 Newport Avenue, Suite 200 in Tustin, California, 92780. It's an absolutely beautiful office we just moved to. I'm actually very proud of us. I'm at your service anytime. Well, Dr. Jovell, thank you so much for coming on. Everything you have right now, you deserve. You worked so hard for it. You've been an inspiration for me from day one once I walked into chiropractic school. And I appreciate it. Can't thank you enough for coming on. And I know you're going to do big things. And I'm really excited for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kevin, for having me. I wish you nothing but the best, too. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. If you enjoy the podcast, subscribe, give us five stars, and leave a review. It really helps boost the podcast and spread the good word. My chiropractic practice is located in West Orange, New Jersey at Montclair Upper Cervical Chiropractic. You can also find us on Facebook at Montclair Upper Cervical Chiropractic. All of my information is on my website at drkevinpecka.com, drkevinpecka.com. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel at Dr. Kevin Pecka for podcast episodes, patient testimonials, and educational videos. I have daily affirmations and inspirational quotes on Instagram at easel affirmations, E-A-S-E-L affirmations. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at drkevinpecka at gmail.com, drkevinpecka at gmail.com. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Cheers.